With the Investing News Network, I'm Scott Tibbles. Today, I'm at the International Mining and Resources Conference, Conference and Expo in Melbourne. And joining me now is Owen Hegarty, who, who is the Executive Chairman of EMR Capital. Thank you so much for joining me, Owen. Good day, Scott. <laughs> so, Owen, c- can you just tell me a little bit, of, firstly, about what EMR Capital does? Yes. Well, EMR Capital, Scott, is a private equity fund. Uh, we are based in uh, Cayman, we're based in Hong Kong, we have office op- operating office here in Australia. We're mining only, we're sort of control position uh, type people. We've got eight worldwide projects, three in Australia, five uh, offshore from here. Uh, and we're a 10 year fund and we're, our favourite commodities are copper and gold, also coking coal and potter. So we focus on those four commodities, we focus on operating improvements, we've got big uh, projects around the world and we're looking for more. Okay, and so we will come back to mining in just a second, but you are an IMARC ambassador. Can you tell me a little bit about IMARC, why it is so important for Melbourne and what investors here at IMARC have to look forward to at the 2019 conference, which is the sixth annual conference? Yes, okay, well thanks for that, uh, Scott. Yes, I am indeed a an IMARC ambassador, so I was one of the uh, people associated originally, I suppose, with helping to, to set it up. Uh, last man standing, oldest person in the industry, maybe still alive, possibly, um, that type of that type of thing. But look, it's it's just a wonderful conference. I mean, in a few short years, we've grown it from from you know very few people up to multiple thousands now. We're sort of six, eight, approaching ten thousand uh, delegates. And the fabulous thing about it, actually, uh, is that you've got uh, multiple delegates, multiple countries, you've got government people, you've got bureau- bureaucrats, you've got small companies companies, large companies, technology companies, and some of the exhibitions are just amazing. So it's worth coming a long way to see some of the exhibitions here. And fabulous for all of these people to come to Melbourne. It is a you know great, the world's most livable city, as you know, uh, and we can accommodate all these people. It's a wonderful exhibition uh, theatre and, and complex here. So it's, it's just a, a great venue, a great complex, great people, great, great conference, Scott. Okay, and so as promised, back to mining. Before we before we started recording, I did ask you what was your favourite commodity. You've said that EMR Capital has some favourites, but what are yours? Looking forward. <laughs> well, my favourite commodities, of course, are copper and gold. You know, gold is just wonderful. It's a commodity. It's a currency. It's a store of value. It's a hedge against all sorts of uh, you know inflation and geopolitical uncertainty. You can never, ever, ever have enough gold. Copper, of course, is they call it red gold. Uh, it'll it'll soon be a precious metal, I think. The world might be running out of copper, uh, but look, it's a again, it's used in everything. So a great diversity of uh, of uses. Um, it's in all the buildings and warehouses and factories and uh, and so on. It's in the electric vehicles. Are going to give it another boost type of thing in terms of demand, uh, and supply is going to be challenged over the coming decades. We think so. No substitute for copper great diversity of uses and there's going to be supply challenges so I like copper and gold. So looking forward would you say that copper is a commodity that going long investors can rely on to make returns for them? Well well, definitely definitely I mean the great diversity of uses the great uh, the good long strong demand coming forward um, and you don't have to be Rio Tinto or Rizal or BHP, a smaller guy can be in and, and go go well in copper. Uh, so I think all of those things and challenges to supply, longer timelines to bring new projects in, all of those things. So so you, as an investor, you really need to watch the copper space, you need to watch the gold space, uh, you need to watch the uh, other things, I suppose, that we're in, but th- they would be the, the picks. I mean, other base and precious metals also good. I mean, zinc and nickel, nickel's having a very good run. Uh, you know, silver, uh, cobalt is is one of the one of the commodities that will benefit from the whole electrical vehicle uh, revolution that's occurring at the moment, the battery revolution, and so on. So, all all of those things that are occurring, you've got to pick up. You know, you've got to watch that space carefully. Uh, copper will be used in pretty much all of them, so that's a that's a good one to have. Uh, but cobalt, lithium, and some of those other uh, specialty metals worth watching as well. 
Okay, and so focusing a bit on Australia, I'm going to ask you one question throwing back and one question looking forward. What would you say was the major trend in the Australian resources industry in 2019 so far? In, in slowing the industry, did you say? In the Australian resources oh, industry. Uh, Australian industry, the, the trend in 2019, I think, was sort of one of consolidation a bit. You know, uh, the world has seen uh, the world has seen a sort of few ups and downs, a few humps, bumps, and trumps. You might say during 2019, uh, with the China. US trade and uh, tech war, you've got Brexit, you've got Europe slowing and so on. So one of consolidation uh, here in Australia. One of the great things about Australia, Australian mining and metals processing industry is very resilient because we're very good at it, you know, world class, best in class, best in show uh, and therefore you, you've got very, very good uh, very, very good companies, very good operations, very good technology and so on. So we are very resilient uh, in, when it comes to the sort of uh, the, the downturns and the humps and bumps type of thing. So I think a, a period of consolidation in, in 2019, you've still got pretty good strong demand going on around the world. You know, no question about that. You've still got good demand in the developing economies in, in China, India, Indonesia, all of those Asian countries uh, nearby us, you know, they're all going all going and growing, you know, so that's okay. And the other developing countries around the world, as I say, they're all looking to get on that super highway of economic growth and sustainable prosperity. That's what they're all trying to do, you know. And uh, so we think that will be an underwriter uh, of continued strong demand for our commodities. And looking into the crystal ball, what would you say investors can watch out for in 2020? In 2020, uh, with 2020 hindsight and 2020 foresight, uh, the things to look out for, I think you're going to see uh, an uplift in, in demand next year uh, because I think you're already starting to see the breaking news in respect of the uh, China-America sort of trade and tech war. That's, a, that's thawing. Uh, that's thawing coming good. Uh, you'll, you'll have Brexit, Brexit over with. You'll have Europe starting to... Uh, Europe starting to uh, see increased demand. You're also going to see it's continuing to come from India and Indonesia uh, and China with the Belt Road Initiative and all the other infrastructure investments they're making. So you're still going to see good strong demand in 2020. So I'd get, uh, I would get invested. We, we're looking for projects now and you know taking the opportunity now when things are a little bit down to try and invest in, uh, in projects and in operations to get set for 2020 and beyond. Okay. And, and which commodity would you say you're the most bullish on for 2020? Well, I think uh, all, all of our favourite commodities like copper and gold, I mean, I like them both. Um, you know, the other precious metals, very good. You've got to, you've got to be care carefully select your carefully select your um, your specialty metals in the EV space, for example, uh, a cobalt we like. Well, in the bulk commodities, we always like iron ore, um, you know, because the steel industry, the blast furnace technology is set. You're going to have to have a diet of iron ore. You're going to have to have a diet of, of, of metallurgical coal. Uh, so, but it's hard to get in as a, as a smaller guy. It's hard to get in. It's really the domain of the bigger guys, unless you're an absolute genius or magician like Andrew Forrest uh, and great entrepreneur and great Australian. Uh, to be able to build a business uh, like that. So we like iron ore, we like copper, we like gold, we like coking coal, uh, and we like cobalt in, in and amongst the specialty metals. So they're, they're, they're our, our favourite commodities at this time. Okay, and just so wrapping up, for our uh, foreign investors, what, why should foreign investors look at Australia? Why should they invest their money here? Well, look, I, I think uh, because, for two or three reasons. First of all, as I said a little bit earlier, it is, you've got world-class operations here, you've got world-class technology, world-class operations, got very good scale, uh, and, and all growing uh, very well. I mean, this is the best place in the world for, uh, for efficiency, efficient operations, for long-term sustainable competitive businesses. We've got all the technology, all the capability, all the know-how. So that, that's sort of a given, that's your base case. But not only on that sort of technical uh, side, you've got a, a terrific governance regime here too in respect of the ASX uh, platform for listing, uh, all the rules and regulations, you know exactly where you stand uh, from a governance perspective. And it's not just the, the regulatory governance, it's also 
also your whole ESG regime, environmental, social, governance, all wrapped up together. Uh, and, and you know where you stand. The rules are very good, they're being upgraded all the time, uh, and Australia and Australians are best in class at all of those things. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for giving me an, a quick look in at the situation here at IMARC. Thank you, Owen. Lovely. Thank you very much, Scott. Good to see you and good luck. Wonderful. And once again, I'm Scott Tibbles with the Investing News Network and I've been speaking with Owen Hegarty of EMR Capital.